Conceptually, when we think about constructing a dictionary entry, even in, say, Microsoft Word, we look at two main characteristics of that entry as we compile that entry. And these are the structure or hierarchy of the entry, and the other is the content. Every dictionary entry, no matter how simple, has a hierarchical structure that we can identify and that we compose as we create an entry. In the entry we're looking at, for example, execute, we have the main head word and attached to that we have information such as the part of speech, past tense and so on. And then beneath that we have, in this case, two distinct senses or sub-meanings. Then belonging to each of these senses or sub-meanings is a translation, in this case in Northern Tutu, and a usage example. The usage example belongs to the sense. This usage example belongs to sense 1. This usage example belongs to sense 2. And these usage example translations belong to the usage examples respectively. There is thus an underlying skeletal structure that is hierarchical within this entry, representing the various senses and translations and usage examples and so on. And then attached to that hierarchical structure is the actual content, the actual text that makes up a usage example or a translation equivalent. When we compile a dictionary entry in, say, Microsoft Word, the hierarchical structure is still there. We still create that hierarchical structure, but only implicitly. We don't explicitly specify the hierarchy. It's still there, though. And when we construct a dictionary entry in TLEX, the main difference between TLEX and, say, Microsoft Word in this respect is that we construct the hierarchy ex explicitly. And we construct that hierarchy in the tree view. Hence, the name tree uh, is derived from uh, the branches. A hierarchy has branches and a tree has branches and hence we have the name tree view. And as you can see we are now viewing this entry in TLEX and we see we have as what we call nodes on the tree we have or elements. The various elements that make up the tree are a lemma then attached to and thus belonging to the lemma are two sense elements that form the structure uh, and belonging to, thus underneath, each sense element is a translation equivalent, that's TE Northern, TE North translation equivalent Northern Sutu element for a translation belonging to that sense and an example element for a usage example belonging to that sense. And so the, the elements that comprise the hierarchy are attached as what we call child elements of the elements to which they belong. Uh, don't worry if that sounded a bit complicated. Uh, we'll take you through an example or two shortly. Now, important, within the tree view, we are editing only the tree structure, the hierarchy. The content, the actual text of a particular usage example or a particular translation is edited in the attributes sub-windows F1 and F2. So the actual text of this example we edit here in under attributes. 
Thus the attributes represent the content attached to the structure. So here in the tree view we edit the structure of an entry and here in the attributes windows we edit the content belonging to the elements of the structure. Uh, and you can see the attributes window is linked to the tree view in that if we click on a particular element in the tree view it displays the attributes the content boxes associated with that element or if we click on say the lemma element it shows us the content so shows us the entire hierarchy unfolded yet but all the attribute boxes associated with all the elements underneath the selected element in this case all the attribute boxes for the entire entry also note that the subtree that is currently selected in the tree view is also highlighted by default with a little dotted border in the preview area so if we select sense1 the whole of sense1 is shown is highlighted if we select sense2 the whole of sense2 is highlighted if we just select this example just that example is highlighted Note also, and as a use, useful tip, uh, you can also click on a particular attribute or field's content in the preview area and it will immediately take you to the attribute box for that particular piece of content. So if we want to edit this example again, we can just click on it in the preview area and we are immediately taken to F1 with the cursor standing in that box to then edit that uh, example. Uh, just back on the hierarchy again, note obviously, or it should be obvious, every entry is going to have its own uh, different tree view hierarchy depending on how complex that entry is. Finally, if you're wondering what's the difference between attributes F1 and attributes F2, the difference is that F2 contains attributes that um, where the value of that attribute has been restricted to selection from a closed list. We have a list and you can tick one or more values from that list. F1 on the other hand contains mainly those attributes uh, where the value may be typed freely as well as list attributes where the value is restricted to selection from a closed list but where you may only choose one from a drop down as opposed to F2 where you can select more than one value. Note that these F1 and F2 are also shortcut keys that you can use at any time to quickly jump to the relevant window. F1, F2 and then the next sub windows on the attributes and tools window are F3, a search tool, F4 format, which has a number of settings that affect the output generated in the preview, filter, which is a kind of advanced search, very powerful, but we'll get back to that later, and finally F6, the integrated corpus.